Okay, the small scale electrolysis of uh, sodium chloride solution using these uh, carbon fiber electrodes. The first thing we need to do is to put some of the sodium chloride or brine into the petri dish. Until it's about two thirds full. The next thing we need to do is to take these little sample tubes that we'll be using to collect any gases that evolve over the electrodes and fill those full of the brine. Now although the brine is harmless at the start and we're not worried about it getting on our fingers, we wouldn't want to do this later on in the experiment as it gets rather corrosive. So trap it with your hand down underneath the surface as much as you can and uh, turn over. There's one. Again, fluid down underneath the surface and over mm, that one. You can probably see we've got a little bit of gas at the top, so we need to do it again. But we can't have too much fluid in our petri dish, so let's remove it from there. Again, trap the fluid over, invert into the solution, and down there. Got it. Now you might want to wash your hands after that stage. And the next stage is to insert the graphite electrodes. They're quite bendy and flexible uh, to enable us to do that. And what we do is we grasp it in the tweezers here and down into the solution and then up into the sample tube like so and then feed it through using the tweezers to push it up. And that's like so, into one. Now for the second one, again, grasp the end of the garment under the nice solution, tilt the tube just a little bit and push up. And there we got both electrodes inserted. <coughs> The next thing we need to do is to just raise the electrolysis tubes a little bit and trap the electrodes in place. So we use a little bit of this modelling clay and we're going to go for one either side, so let's move this one over to the other side. And over here, right, a little larger modelling clay and as I said, what we'll do is we'll We'll trap the carbon in place there on the side of the petri dish and at the same time raise up the tube slightly and squash it against the clay. So tilted slightly, there we are. Over onto the other side, another little small piece of clay. Just uh, straighten it up and repeat the exercise. So, track the electrode in place, raise up the tube a little bit, and uh, that one doesn't want to hold very well. I think it's because there's a little bit of moisture there. So now we've got both electrodes in place. We can take the other end and attach the crocodile clips. There's one. Here's the other. And we've got six volts power supply. Turn on and see what happens.
Now this one over on the right hand side is the cathode and you should already be able to see the evolution of some colourless gas there. This one over on the left hand side is the anode and although there are tiny bubbles visible on the graphite electrode, nothing yet has risen to the surface of the tube. Now we're using uh, 6 volts DC here. Um, in order to speed things up a little, I'm just going to increase that to 12. No necessity to in a school experiment. Well, of course, you might guess the products of the electrolysis of brine at the cathode and anode, and it's just as well to carry out this experiment in a fume cupboard so that you don't uh, produce lots of toxic gas into the laboratory. Well, now we can begin to see some gas at the anode there, collecting at the top of the tube. There's also a slight uh, yellowy colorization to the solution, and that's probably due to an effect with the graphite electrode there. Um, I can smell the gas, and I can tell you it smells like a swimming pool. Um, what I'll do now is take some of this blue litmus paper and uh, see what happens if we put it into a solution around that electrode. You can probably see some gas bubbles produced um, from the electrode that isn't in the tube. So immediately it's turned pink and if we leave it there just a little bit longer we can see we're getting a bleaching effect occurring and that confirms of course that we have chlorine. As for the product gas at the cathode here on the right hand side, we'll be testing that with a lit splint or lighted splint. And that is of course the hydrogen gas test. If we have hydrogen, it should burn with a small pop.